This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Monday Meta Update. Monday Meta Update. And then we're going to get right into the arena and playing some games with a deck but this is going to be a quick monday meta update some people have asked me why i've stopped doing these i haven't there just hasn't been a lot going on as we'll get into in just a second but uh i will give you some information on how to follow the meta game and where to learn what's going on in the meta game sites that i use so there is an unprecedented an unprecedented amount of nothing going on around the release of this set no big tournaments to follow, no places to see these decks in action and get real results in a competitive setting and know what's good, which is kind of both strange and it's good and bad, right? The upside is nobody can look and say, oh, look, Simic is still the best, so I'm going to copy that and smash the ladder with it. They have to make that determination for themselves. And maybe, just maybe, without some clear indicator of what is best, people will build some new decks, play some new cards, do some things like that. On the other hand, there's kind of this vacuum where we don't know what's going on and we're used to knowing what's going on. And when people are used to knowing what's going on and they don't, they tend to feel uncertain. And that seems to have an effect on people, causes anxiety and causes like a need, a need to know. So I'm gonna share with you kind of what's going on in Magic. And the answer is nothing. This is the Star City Games organized play schedule. Their first tournament is going to be on February 1st through 2nd, and it's team constructed. Uh, hard to take a lot away from team tournaments, and so is their second one, and then their third one is Pioneer. SCG is basically off the radar for standard for a while. Deleted. How about Magic? How about the monthly MTG schedule? Let's check out the premier events for Magic in January. Oh, you have none. Some of you might remember that there used to be pro tours right after a set release to help get the pros on the stage playing with new cards. Not this time. Not this time at all. In fact, their first premiere event isn't going to be for some time. I honestly think they just didn't uh, update this calendar whatsoever. When we look at MTG Arena events, we go in and we find out that there is a standard metagame challenge coming up this weekend. So hopefully we'll see some deck lists come out of the standard metagame challenge, the ones that get to the tremendous amount of wins that is required to cap out those events. I click on it. Do I get information about what the event is? No, I do not. Why would I? But if I recall, the metagame challenge is get to 10 match wins, best two out of three, and win an absurd amount of gems. So hopefully some people will post their deck lists out of that event. More on that in just a second. And then we have the Magic Fest schedule for Channel Fireball, which let's check out January. Pioneer, Pioneer. February Pioneer Limited, not a standard tournament until March 6th. Oh my lord. Unbelievable. So we are going to be living in kind of a place where we don't know what the best deck is. You're actually going to have to go out there and learn some things for yourself. But if you're crazy like me and you really want to see what other people are winning with and get ideas and know what to prepare for, if that is built into your DNA at this point like it is mine, there are some resources still. My favorite is Twitter. You can say what you want about Twitter. I don't join the conversation on Twitter that often. I don't put too much out into the world. I really want Twitter to see deck lists because people actually publish their deck lists a lot. And you might say, well, I don't know who to follow. It's, it takes a lot of time to follow all the right people. Well, there's kind of an account doing this for you. The Arena Deck Lists Twitter account, at Arena Deck Lists, follows all these people. They follow me. <laughs> yeah. And then they retweet deck lists. That's all that they do. So when Bloody the Streamer says that Bloody the Streamer is doing very well with this particular deck list, they do a retweet and you get to see it. I pretty much look at this account every day for cool new deck ideas. It's one of my favorite things to learn. Like, I, what the hell is this? Did somebody actually come up with a good Underworld Breach deck? This would be the first one I've seen. Uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to save that to my bookmarks. 
and I will either play it on my after hours videos or I'll tweak it, work on it myself and make it into a video unless I have something else I'd rather do that I'm working on my own. So that's an example of how I use Twitter for magic deck lists and basically nothing else. Of course, I have some sponsors. Aetherhub.com is an interesting place where you can check out metagame stuff. Although, and over here they also do show events. So when there is a new event, you can go click through this and see the results from those events. They're just not very huge events at this point, which all, all results should be more like until you get the pros sitting down and playing for high stakes, you don't know for sure what the best is until people have to put sort of money where their mouth is. So all of it's mostly for inspiration, not for knowing exactly what is best. Another site I'm still a big fan of that I showed off before is MTG Arena Zone, which has a tremendous just kind of amount of information piled together. So here's a Jeskai Knights Fires that they saw played in 200 Mythic. They watch a lot of people on Twitch and then publish their deck list and uh, what Mythic rank they got to. So it's pretty helpful information. It would really be nice if a site like Esports Gold, one of my sponsors, was compiling information like this too. Chance for glory. Saucy. All right, so that's gonna do it for the Monday Meta Update. Just some tools for how to follow the meta game this week. Now let's get into the video and some mono white shenanigans. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, we're going to find out if healing can actually kill someone. It's life smash. It is gain life, hit opponent, destroy them. And this deck, Let me level with all of you. Let's be real, okay? I don't believe in this deck. I normally test the hell out of a deck and work to bring you something that is a build I really believe in. Now, I'm not saying this build is wrong. This might be one of the better builds of a life gain based beatdown strategy, but I need to be convinced that life gain can actually be good that it can really do it because it they keep printing these Ajani's pride mate type cards and people in my comments and people we know people love them they play them every day have you ever spent one day one day playing arena and not come across somebody trying to proc their Ajani's pride mate i don't think i have watch any other content creator pretty sure it happens to them too unless you only play high mythic all day where most people at that level have realized that building a giant creature off of gaining life doesn't often win the game but people love this they love it some of you love it and that's that's fine um something about this appeals to a certain type of player so the question i keep asking all the time and the reason i rated heliata 2 on my crafting guide right is life gain finally good is it finally good? It, is this deck competitive now? So I want to go give it an honest try. And you know what? I didn't, I did not work on this. Like I, I haven't play tested it. I haven't messed around with this. I've just theory crafted and thought about what would be the right things to do. And I think the best thing to do is you have to have a powerful end game. We saw the blue white fireball yesterday. We need the mono white fireball which is put the angelic gift on the pride mate or give it protection from the color that the opponent is playing with the life's bounty play have the linden or play the linden and with the heliod create a ton of life gain triggers make a giant pride mate that is unblockable and win with it i think that's the way it has to be i think a large creature swinging on the ground given time just won't do it it gets chump blocked it gets bounced you have to start over it gets removed your life gain sources get removed and it doesn't do the job so that is the theory behind the deck that we can use cards like daxos life's bounty heliod linden get a ton of life triggers put them on an evasive creature um, either make a giant pride mate or put counters on healer's hawk or something that we put the angelic gift on and win the game we have some backup plan of course a johnny making more pride mates but also exiling their whole board Archon of Sun's Grace, getting a flying lifelink body that makes 
other flying lifelink bodies. And we've got a little touch of interaction with Conclave Tribunal, not a big deal. I thought about Banishing Light instead, but I actually believe I'll have creatures I don't mind tapping to play this. So you can play this the same turn as an Archon of Sun's Grace to get the trigger right away, which you can't do with Banishing Light. Anyway, that is the theory craft for the deck. And like I said, this isn't one that I played. We're gonna go see if we can smash an event. If we smash an event, you might get me to look in this camera and say, maybe life gain isn't so bad. But until that day, it has to prove me wrong. Hey guys, before we hit the gameplay, please go to the description or a pinned comment if I remember to make one and click the link and check out esportsgold.com. They sponsor my channel. They've helped me a lot with insights into how to find and make better content for you. And they are big supporters of the show. Right now, they are the best way on the internet to follow your favorite esports teams. So if I'm into CSGO, you can go into this section and find match results or a player team that you're particularly interested in, whether it's a specific player or a specific team, and follow along with their journey to the top. So if that is your thing, I will tell you right now a little spoiler of what might be coming. They're thinking about getting into magic, so you can follow your favorite magic players and magic teams and their results. So please pay them a visit. They want to know if the magic world is interested in that kind of thing. So go ahead and click the description and visit esportsgold.com. It really helps me out, and thank you. Pride mate, hawk, win. Keo, what's up, Keo? Me and Archimedes out for some damage. Out for some life link smashings. May we play all mono red. Nothing but the mono red, please. Hmm. Not quite what I was thinking. All right, let's just get the combo online right away. Put a counter on the Pride Mate. 3 3 body. Green, blue. Simic Smash. Flash and Smash. Do we go for another Pride Mate for the max or do we go for the Daxos pumps? We're one spell only. Let's go for the Daxos. If it resolves, it's, I think, the best upside. Okay. Opponent is in trouble. Do they have a Brazen Borrower? No. What a just growth spiral? Cutthroat. Cutthroat, you too small. If we smash a flash, is this deck good? I don't think it's good yet, but it would feel nice. -a. Here's my hawk. What you got? You gonna sabotage my hawk? No. So right now the opponent doesn't have good blocks. And the only thing that we're pumping when we play a Pride Mate is the other Pride Mate. And if the opponent has Brazen Borrower, they're going to block it anyway, so we may as well attack first. Getting another point or two on the Pride Mate isn't worth it to me. We want to make sure we get there. And the opponent with some plays and a block. No. <laughs> and takes it all. Yes. Okay. So do we go for this? Our opponent still has two mana. They did that growth spiral earlier, which might have been what held priority. I'm not convinced they have something. Let's see, let's make them have it. And they do have a quench, okay. I guess I should have held that for next turn. It could make a big difference. You're at seven. You might have an ambusher. How do we make the ambusher awkward? Play anything that needs to be countered. It makes the ambusher awkward. Tribunal would be included in that. Oh, oh ho, I see. We will prevail, huh? No blocks. Feels like it's an Ajani Strength of the Pride. We can minus make a creature and cast a Conclave Tribunal if we wish. That's pretty nuts. Ajani versus Nissa, who would have thought? Beating Simic Flash would go a long way towards me making towards me liking the deck a little more. Okay. 
So if we attack with everything, the opponent can choose to go down to three and kill one pride mate, which I don't think is particularly grand. However, if we play a Conclave Tribunal and take away the Brineborn Cutthroat, the opponent has to chump block with a forest just to stay alive. They untap with a Nissa. So the other option is we could take out their Nissa and just attack with the Pride Mate, let the opponent block with both. Let's see. One, two, three, four. I think taking out the Nissa is the way to be, to be honest. It just makes blockers for days. And the opponent's going to scoop it up, seeing Nissa go away. See, then we attack, and the opponent probably double blocks, and they're left with no board and no Nissa versus a Pride Mate, a Planeswalker, two Hawks, and a Draxos. And I think that that means we'll win the game the following turn. Storyteller 215. Let's spar. Going second, but with a lot of the things that we want in the deck. No Linden and no Heliod yet. Those. Those are hiding, but we're still doing Hawk Pride Mate things. And this time, we can have a Flying Pride Mate. Holy hype. Black. Cauldron Familiar. The cat came back. Stunning development. Bacaw. Yeah, you never block that cat in that spot. Never, ever. It'll just come back later. And this is bad. I don't think we have a good game against the Sacrifice deck. And what are we discarding? The Life's Bounty could be crucial. What I'd like to discard against Sacrifice is the Hawk, because Mayhem Devil tears it apart. But the Angelic Gift Pride Mate may still be our best bet, along with Draxos. I'm going to discard a land, have faith that we'll find another at some point, and take the three. Alright, let's, let's get the combos going. We draw a land, we can Daxos into Bounty to keep um, the lifelink coming. Midnight Reaper is here, okay. We do draw the land. So I want to set up the Bounty and the Daxos before I set up the Flying Pride Mate. I want the Bounty to protect the Pride Mate. Although our opponent right now doesn't have a sack outlet, which means claim the firstborn doesn't work, so maybe I don't have to worry about that, to be honest. Maybe I can just go Angelic Gift beat down right now. I think it's better to have a board, though. I won't be attacking with the Pride Mate this turn, because I don't want the opponent to get to chump with the cat and draw a card. It does make them kill my Pride Mate this turn, or things get a lot worse for them. Daxos also says when a creature dies, you gain a life. So it's a neat trick. There's the Mayhem Devil. <sighs> That's so bad. So now, they still don't have a way to sacrifice the Pride Mate if they steal it with a Claim the Firstborn, which is very common in these decks. So Flying Pride Mate will have to get the job done. And I think that means we hold back the other Pride Mate. Draw a card. Ah, oh, would have been nice to find another way to gain a life here to hit for a little more. But let's go, Flying Pride Mate. Priest. Okay, needs another turn. Land, okay. So, this is two triggers. One from entering the battlefield and one from leaving the battlefield. The opponent doesn't have a way to sacrifice. And if they block and something dies, they take a damage from their Midnight Reaper. But this should be lethal, right? Because of legend rule. So, trigger, trigger. Got him. Got him. So aggressive. Angelic gift. So clutch there. Gamesh. Game. Shh. Games H. First time we've had Heliod and Linden ready to go, and we're on the play, so without a one-drop, the hand isn't as good, but I'm willing to try it. We have our more top-end cards. Friends list stuff, guys. Friends list stuff. In a game. So it needs to show people when you are in a game. I don't know if it already does that. Like, I see online. I don't see in-game. That would be a nice 
addition to the friends list for sure. All of my subscribers, YouTube members, and patri and patrons can get on the friends list and possibly get on the show. If they challenge me at the right time, I'd like for Arena to make it easier for that. It's in the Discord, so you have to um, you have to support the channel in one of those ways, and then join the Discord where I have it as a. You can get my ID if you want it, and go ahead and join the list. All right, we drew the hawk. Let's get the Linden going. I think that's better than getting the Heliod going, because then Heliod next turn can add counters right away. And that's the opponent's facing a, some pain. Let's see what they do. They have their green, they have their blue. Let's see what we draw on land. So if they're Simic Flash, again, we just want to force their counters. If they're a bounce deck, we want to get through that. Let's see what happens if we lead with a Healer's Hawk. Would you like counter this? All right. I think that means Heliod isn't going to hit the battlefield, but we're going to try anyway, because we don't know. It's hard to guess that the opponent is a counterspell deck. They could have a Brazen Borrower, some bounce interaction, something else going on. Ooh. Okay, then. The Spirit is ready. So, this is already a creature. The devotion is there. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature or enchantment you control. Whenever we attack, that's what's going to happen. Life, life. So, I don't want to put them on the Pride Mate. I think that would be too risky here. I think going on Linden here is fine. That way we get the damage through. If the Hawk were attacking, I'd put them on the Hawk to try to make it a better threat. And I actually don't mind if the Linden dies because I have another. So, piling the counters onto Linden makes sense. I probably better do something. They're they're dying. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> what are we up against? These Simic players got nothing on us. Nothing. Their blue and their green has had nothing so far. Coco. Sporting the Jace Avatar. This hand is really bad. Need some better threats than that. This hand is closer. We need a Pride Mate or a Heliod, or it doesn't do anything. Maybe the card we put away is Linden. I don't want to put an Angelic Gift on a Healer's Hawk, though. So maybe we keep the top end? This is tough, actually. I, I do want to draw the card, but I think we just put this away. I think it's too weak right now. And we're going to look back and say, wow, if we had kept a 7 with that and had an Angelic Gift in this hand, would we be better off? And now we're on the draw against the cat. Okay. Found Heliod right away. Let's see if this opponent finds an oven in it to use with that Mayhem Devil. Looks like they're the Jund deck. Jund food hasn't changed a bit yet. And they attack with their cat because I think you always should there. And we do draw a playable. I think we go ahead and put that on the battlefield, although it's looking really weak versus a Mayhem Devil and a Massacre Girl. Perhaps there's a version of the deck that runs Hushbringer, but there's a lot of cards here that Hushbringer would hurt, and I'm just thinking of getting away from one tough from one toughness creatures, but I don't think there's a good way to do it. Like this would be hurt by Hushbringer. Uh, Daxos. Daxos is a card you can't run if you run Hushbringer. Pretty rough. Okay. When it's a thinker. Definitely going to take the bump. I wonder if they'd trade their Paradise Druid for this. It looks like Heliod's the next play. The Linden is interesting for combining with Heliod. But I sort of want to get counter I want to get counters on my creatures as quickly as I can. Because as soon as Mayhem Devil comes down, they just get picked off. So playing Linden doesn't buff them until the next turn, and I think I have to make buffing them a priority. Axos is a good draw. Okay. 
Maybe the opponent has to read the shiny new card. Speaking of shiny, did you get blinded? Sorry, not sorry, I guess. Blinded by the light. I think the opponent makes this block, but we'll see. No, they do not. All right, counters. Let's spread them around. That sound is gonna get annoying. Did you guys hear the kind of like nails on broken glass sound of Heliod while those counters were, were resolving? And we have to let our opponent click through that? Ooh, I don't like, no likes. Coco needs some time. This is the type of player, there's no clock in best of one. If there were, <laughs> I bet this player would go to time a lot. Okay, straight up activate the food. Means our opponent might be trying to hit land drops, and there is a land, so now what do they do once they have it? What is that a symbol of? They must have expensive cards in their hand. Oh, they had another land. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty confused. Pretty confused by what they're going for. All right, well, we're going to beat them up pretty good now. Here comes the pain. Trigger, trigger, trigger. So let's get one counter on the life's bounty so the Paradise Druid doesn't have a block on it. And let's put the rest on the Hawk to get some evasive damage through. This is the dream. This is what people, this is what people live for. You life gain, life gain players. This is what we came for. All right, where do we put the counters? Do we keep piling up the Hawk or do we make Heliod a lethal if we sacrifice life's bounty to make it unblockable? I think setting up a lethal Heliod sounds nice, but the Hawk, we can protect it with the bounty, and I think we just get it there next turn, so let's keep it up with the Hawk. In Hawk, we trust. The food deck is also good at gaining life, so when setting up your lethals, it's, it's very unclear if you're actually going to get it over the finish line. Massacre Girl, one, two, if I sacrifice this in advance, that's three. Uh, we do at some point, let's see, one, two, three, four. When this dies, this will no longer be a creature. So this isn't going to die. So yeah, I think I sacrificed this. So yeah, once Linden's gone, this ceases to be a creature, which means the hawk lives, right? There we go, no longer a creature, survives. And now we just need to gain a life and we win. Let's do it the cool way. All right, Massacre Girl, not today. If our opponent still had a food, like bringing back the cat would have been able to get the job done. And now we're on the draw. This is a much rougher hand on the draw than on the play, but we'll give it a shot because, you know, we have a curve now. And we find a like-minded individual to play with. Also running life's bounty. Let's do it. Pride mate? Same art? This is so hype. The great hype battle. I hear that being on the play is good. Have you guys had this experience? Where you were on the draw with the exact same hand, your opponent was on the play? It's, it's not the feels. So Shadow Spear is an interesting option. I chose to go with the uh, flying mechanic instead, but I think both are viable. I really don't like that this is like three mana and is a card that sits on the battlefield. I'd rather have Angelic Gift to draw the card, but I could see the argument for both. Both are reasonable. So what's our play? We play Linden, we can't really attack. So I think that this is going to be a tribunal. And do I need to leave mana up to protect my pride mate? I think so. 
So I think we let the opponent hit us and take their pride mate off the board. Which means we leave one mana untapped. And you. So this is going to hurt, but hopefully the opponent doesn't have a Heliod or another pride mate for the payoff. Because if they're out of payoffs, we can start snowballing our pride mate from here. Well, you know. Sometimes you play to your outs and uh, you are given no chance. It happens. So on the bright side, no, I guess not. I was going to say we can remove the pride mate or this Ajani, but we can't do much to it. We don't have a way to pump the hawk. Don't have a way to pump the hawk. And the opponent with the Shadow Spear can do a lot of damage to our Ajani. So we don't want to play that. Playing Linden and starting to build a Mega Pride Mate is probably our best bet. And if we hit this Pride Mate right now, it would have to it would have to like destroy itself with the minus two. The other option is to sacrifice this and get the Pride Mate off the board, which I don't think is worth it. We have just as many Pride Mates if we're patient. So another good question here with our opponent with only one card in hand is do we play out the other Hawk or do we hold up protection? Protection's interesting. We can keep something from hitting with lifelink, but not if it has trample as well. So I also it says they lose hexproof and indestructible. This is protection. That's different. I do think we need the flyers. So I guess I let the shields down. The opponent only has two cards. If they have a banishing light or a conclave tribunal, it's a beating. That's a beating too. That is a beating too. How do we outmaneuver them? Neither of us have a Heliod. There is still the chance of drawing a Heliod here. And once that Shadow Spear equips, we have to have the biggest Pride Mate. We have to figure out how to get there. And I don't know if we can when we both have a Linden. Our opponent is also at 31. Um, sure. I guess you just want the life trigger because I can't kill it? No, I can kill it. Is it worth killing? Our opponent would kill two of our creatures, so that's not acceptable. Gift. The gift is here. But when and how do we use it? I think it's better to get another pride mate down right now. Right now, a hawk is looking to trade for a hawk because I don't have a way to buff my hawk. What if I put Angelic Gift on Linden and then attack the Johnny? That's a lot of triggers. I think that's what's best. Because this has Vigilance, so it can also defend. Archon, bit too slow. So now the opponent has to chump the Linden. Which I don't think they want to. And we still have mana to use the life's bounty to protect our pride mate if it gets into a scuffle with the opponent's shadow speared pride mate. But the opponent chumps. They give up the air. That's kind of surprising. They really want their Ajani, but they're at 34. They can go to 35. Oh my god. Let's see if they see it. It's a zero. All they need to do is gain a life to zero their Ajani, and they can do that by making a creature with the castle. And they do, but this is a cool play. I would have loved to do it myself, but we were on the draw, which makes it impossible. And there you go. We can come back from this? I, I, I doubt it. Anyway. Attack with all? 
I don't know why they're being this way. I would I, I let them do their play, but now they're being like really weird and slow. And why didn't they attack with the bounty? Is it they want some weird Stevens? It would have been extra damage. It would have been one, two. Yeah. Anyway. So I think the last three games were unwinnable. I think the last three games were unwinnable. I don't think there was anything for me to do. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll go back and watch them and keep trying to figure it out. In the meantime, we've got a mastery thing. And is life good? I mean, I lost two terrible draws. And I lost the mirror on the draw. And the opponent had a better, I think, a better hand than I had. Uh, so, arguable. I guess it's still up in the air. I do like the build for the most part. I think that Angelic Gift is still very good. I don't blame the Shadow Spear lovers, and we never saw Arcan of Sun's Grace matter. So that's a problem. If Arcan, in particularly like in the mirror on the draw is probably where you'd hope to grind the opponent out with an Archon, but it just doesn't seem to be an option. So I could see cutting the Archon for sure. And the card, and getting a Shadow Spear in there, actually I wouldn't feel too bad about this. One or two of these makes some sense. I've also see, seen some people running the Owl. Owl can hit a lot of enchantments in the deck, and it's another flying body. So I would, I'd be open to some Owl and Spear shenanigans. Totally. Something along perhaps these lines. This was just a little bit slow, I thought, in the games where it mattered. It, it would come down, but not really at the time I most wanted it. You could also trim a gift or like a gift could be another spear, but it's legendary. So I kind of think that more gifts is better because they at least replace themselves. But we also saw hands I had to mulligan because I had two gifts in them. I don't, I'd still mulligan that hand if it was two spears. So maybe it's just something like this and more owls because owl can be maybe a little bit better, a little grindier, evasive, something like this. All right, I think I'll leave it there for the end of the day. Thank you very much for watching this video. A special thank you today to my patrons on Patreon, some recent signups who uh, at that 90, 99 tier, you know who you are, and I appreciate it a lot. And I just want to say thank you to everybody for supporting the channel. The last few days of videos have been uh, amazing. Um, not just because of the new cards, but I think because of some of the extracurricular smack talking activities, which I'm glad to see so many of you getting into. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.